Do, wait, 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 wait. What? What? what intro? You did the What's Up Street Talks. <laughs> what's Up Street Talks? Who is it? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm Eric Kim. <laughs> from the? Oh, shit. From the uh, Japan Camera Hunter. Oh, okay. So, yeah, right. No, that's Eric Kim. Okay. I'm the camera. Yeah. And where are we right now? We're in uh, Tsukushima. We're going to eat some monjiaki. What is that? Uh, it's like fried... Well, it kind of looks like puke, but it doesn't <laughs> taste like puke. It tastes awesome. So, yeah. fried monjiaki. Yeah. And totally random. Let's let's take a look at these seats. These are awesome. Hey, open up, open up the seat real quick, Mike. Whoa! Why why they do that? So that your clothes and shit don't smell. Oh yeah. Okay. Anyways, take a seat, Mike. And it's Japanese efficiency at its finest. Oh, nice. All right. So, Mike, uh, would you like to? Introduce yourself uh, to the viewers out there. Uh, my name is Michael Nguyen. When people ask me where I come from, I say I come from my mom's hole. <laughs> and um, so after you came out of your mom's home, tell us uh, how you got interested in photography. How did I get interested in photography? <laughs> were you, were you taking photos out of the hole? <laughs> you saw the light. <laughs> well, oh yeah, Nama. Nama. Mitsu. Uh, how did I get into photography? Yeah. Like in general? Well, I took some classes in college. I was a graphic design major, so photography's interested me for like a good 10 years now. Mm -hmm. And starting out, I always took like, you know, the stereotypical shit, like flowers and like, you know, mountains and crap like that. HDR? What's that? You ever do any HDR? No, no HDR. I stayed away from the HDR stuff. Oh, okay. But, good for uh, you, man. But uh, yeah, and then I just eventually kind of like grew out of that and tried to get into like deeper stuff. Mm. So, when did you discover, um, you know, more of a street photography, portraiture, a lot of the photography you do now? Well, ever since coming to Japan, right, you know, mm -hmm. like Tokyo is like the photo mecca of the world. Yeah. And, then, and I started Flickr, and um, just through Flickr members, I met a lot of people, mm -hmm. uh, like Bellamy here, and like Charlie Kirk, and among mm -hmm. like other Japanese photographers. And mm -hmm. after like seeing their work, I just realized like I got so much to learn, you know, so... I started like just kind of absorbing everything, going to exhibits, checking mm -hmm. out books, and mm -hmm. like uh, reading your blog. Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and it's just like you know, there's just so much to learn. So um, you know, talking a little bit about um, you know, you talk about coming to Tokyo. So you're originally from uh, the states. So can you tell us a little bit about um, you know your background in America and uh, why you decided to come to Tokyo and. Uh, well, I'm from the Bay Area. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Hey, no more. No more. Hey. Uh, hey. Grew up there, uh, went to school in Santa Barbara, studied graphic design, worked at a, doing graphic design. Oh, mm. didn't come by yet. Come by. Come by. Cheers. 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 And I was just kind of bored as hell in the Bay Area. I mean, it's a nice place, mm -hmm. but it's like, boring but in a nice way like you know I want to eventually settle there perhaps uh -huh. but being a young guy you yeah know, male single in your mm -hmm. 20s like I want to go somewhere more exciting yeah and for graphic design like my top three cities in the world would be New York Tokyo Stockholm and um, I mean I can go to New York anytime and I made some Japanese friends when mm -hmm. I was in college and yeah. we come to Tokyo so came to Tokyo to, to uh, kind of study more graphic design here see what I'm so you've been in uh, Tokyo for about five years now. Five years, yeah. So, um, you know, how do you think uh, your photography has changed and evolved over time? Uh, changed a lot, really. Actually, I mean, I started, like I said, you know, just taking, like, the traditional, like, pretty pictures of, like, mountains and flowers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. After coming here and seeing, like, a lot of other people's work, I realized there's so much more to photography. Mm -hmm. And um, so now, like, my focus is more on street photography. Mm -hmm. It's uh, something I want to focus more on. So who are some uh, photographers that uh, you, rate, uh, you relate with a lot, both uh, maybe the, the masters and maybe more contemporary photographers? The masters? I mean, uh, yeah, I admire, like, you know, the typical. I mean... Cartier Bresson, mm -hmm. I think there's a lot to learn from him, even yeah. though his work may be a little bit dated these days. Mm -hmm. But um, like Winogrand, I like them a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, contemporary guys, Trent Park, mm -hmm. Nick Turpin. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the one street photographer I think I would probably want to inspire to be like the most, if I'd say Elliot Erwitt. Um, there's a guy in Japan, Junku. Oh yeah, Mishimura. Junku. Yeah. Love that guy. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Junku is the man. Yeah, so, the guy is the man. Yeah. So yeah, those guys. 
And um, so um, we, we, we had a conversation a little bit earlier about, you know, being addicted to Flickr and the uh, likes, the fave things, fave yes. whoring. So tell us, you know, maybe, uh, you know, you, you said that it's been frustrating. you like, what are some of the negatives of being like um, really obsessed with the social media Flickr and getting faves and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, well, I mean, it's incessant, right? It never ends. It just becomes like the disease, really, like a drug. It just, yeah. you know, and it, it really doesn't improve your photography. I mean, it does have up to a certain point because it's nice to get recognition that you know and the exposure like yeah. people actually come back and look at your photos and whatnot mm -hmm. but um i mean i don't want to sound elitist or like you know like a, some kind of like stuck up snob or anything but i think the general public don't doesn't really know what good photography is mm -hmm. so you know i mean it's nice to get faves and all but it, it i think it's an illusion that, that you're doing a good job so what are some of, um, what photos on your Flickr tend to get faved a lot and photos that maybe uh, um, don't get as much love? Well, I mean, my street photography, I'm relatively new to it, so, you know, I don't get that too many views on it, mm -hmm. but, <laughs> do we have to go there? But yeah, we have to go there, <laughs> we, we have to go, go there. there. But yeah, the, I guess I'm known for taking pictures of, of hot women in hot springs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'd like to, like, you know, grow up from that mm -hmm. like I mean the pictures are nice but they're quite shallow I mean <laughs> there's no real emotional connection to them I, I mean can, I can sink quite deep I mean <laughs> you, can, you can connect with them but yeah. but I don't know yeah so I want to be known as more than the guy that takes hot chicks and hot springs you know mm. so well yeah oh right. dude this looks bomb right Oh, nice. You want to attempt to make it, Eric? No, let's let's spell me. We're gonna continue the interview. So, um, this is another question I asked you. So, um, uh, you're you're kind of at a crossroads where you're trying to figure out uh, what you want out uh, your photography and stuff like that. So, uh, I asked you earlier, you know, why do you take photos? So, can you um, share why you take photos? Why do I take photos? Um, other than like uh, it's fun, I guess. Um, to me, since I have such terrible memory, it's kind of like a visual diary for me. Mm -hmm. And like, I just, you know, it just reminds me of like where I was at a certain point and how I felt at that time. Mm -hmm. Like when I look at a picture that I snap, it's like not only do I see what I saw, but I actually like recall like maybe the song that was stuck in my head mm -hmm. at that moment or like, you know, maybe like the smell of like some food from a shop that mm -hmm. was nearby. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like a visual diary, and mm -hmm. you know, just kind of like a like a jotting down my emotion at the time. Mm. Um, when you're shooting uh, your photography, uh, now you shoot uh, exclusively film. Um, whoa, 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 whoa! It's getting, it's getting, a bit wild. It's getting hot in here. So, uh, Mike, all right. So, Nelly, how long have you been shooting uh, film? Uh, well, I I learned on film initially. Mm. Uh, in college, I took some black and white courses. Yeah. So I started off in film, but mm -hmm. um, uh, but then I, you know, back in like 2002, 2003, the digital SLR was starting to become affordable for the yeah. masses. So I got a D70 at the time, uh -huh. and it was just a lot easier to like post process and like you know share with friends online and yeah. stuff like that. But I kind of outgrew that. Like to me, digital is like, yeah, the pictures are nice, but they're too nice. Like the images are too sharp, and like mm. there's no like I don't know how to say it, but like there's I guess there's no like feeling to it. It's just kind of like soulless to me. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got back into film, and then like mm -hmm. meeting all these people in Tokyo, mm -hmm. everyone shot film. So, mm -hmm. so do you feel that um, being part of the community here has really helped your photography? Oh yeah, for sure. Like meeting guys like you and everything definitely has on us. Uh, don't push me to be better. Mm -hmm. um, when Charlie was here, I used to go out with him all the time, and like, not just shooting with him, but even just like smoking, talking about photography, and like, you know, what we want to do. It's, it's helped me a lot. <laughs> um, and so, you know, you 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 shot film. You've uh, met all these other guys, and uh, you also went through a period where you were, had like a ton of film cameras. Why don't you share us um, that experience, and maybe what you decided to just stick with uh, in terms of shooting with now? I've owned about 15 film cameras at one point, and um, right now I've 
I still have maybe five or so, but the two I use the most is my Leica M6 and a, a Rolleiflex SL66. Mm -hmm. um, they're just the two. I think those are the only two cameras that I feel are like kind of like a part of me, like an extension of my of my hands. Mm -hmm. So those are the two that I stick with now. Um, it's interesting shooting with um, you know medium format versus 35 mil. Um, you know, of course the the, the cameras are much different in terms of how they respond, and um, you talked about how shooting with a medium format makes you slow down a little bit. Yes. Um, you know, street photography is mostly with your 35 mil, and right. um, you know your portraits are more with uh, your medium format. Can you sh share a little bit about um, the difference between shooting with, uh, let's say, your Leica and uh, shooting with your Rolleiflex? Uh, well, yeah, with the Rolleiflex, you know, because um, well, I have some issues with it, but it really forces me to slow down. Mm -hmm. and like think about my shot a whole lot more. Mm -hmm. Also the Rolleiflex is a 6x6 so it's square so you gotta think about composition completely differently. Mm -hmm. And um, my Rolle, um, it also has a bellows on it so you can tilt shift mm -hmm. so you can play around with like you know changing the focal plane mm -hmm. and whatnot. Uh, whereas when I'm shooting street with the Leica it's just wide open you know I want to get as much in as possible. Mm -hmm. So it's a totally different thought process about framing and where to focus. What do you mean wide open? Uh, well, I shoot at least around like f8. On well, the that's Leica. not wide open. You mean oh, I mean, sorry, yeah. Stop down. Yeah, stop down. Wide open more on the, the roll effect side. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, uh, you know, yeah, the thinking about focusing and everything and the framing is completely different on the, the, the two. Okay, and, you know, thinking about, uh, you know, moving forward, what are some projects or things you'd like to focus on um, in your photography the next few months? Yeah, I mean, that's that's a hard question. It's something I've been struggling with for months now. Mm -hmm. Like, I look at, well, I'm trying to curate some photos for a website. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's, it's rather depressing looking at my photos now. It's just, like, I mean, there's half-decent pictures, like single pictures, but, you know, in the context of a project, it doesn't really mean anything to anyone other than me. Mm -hmm. So I kind of want to focus on something like specific, like a body of work that I, I would be proud of to show to people and I just don't have that right now and I don't really know how to go about doing that. Mm -hmm. So it's something I'm struggling with. Yeah, well I mean it's, uh, I think it's a struggle that lots of us have and I think it's, um, it's quite common. Um, but, you know, uh, we'll definitely help you with that. and. You know, so last question before we eat our lovely... What looks like puke? This yeah. actually smells really good. It smells insane. It just looks really bad. <laughs> it, it looks worse when it's done, actually. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's still bubbling. Yeah. yeah. And so can you share, um, maybe give a shout out to some people you like to, um, you know, give thanks to or... Um, shout outs? Yep. Other than to... To my parents, who brought me into this world, <laughs> yeah, the hole yeah. that I came out of. Yeah, yeah, Thanks, yeah. Mom. Thanks, Thanks, mom. Well. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I want to say what's up to Charlie. I think oh, yeah. um, hang up to hang out with Charlie a lot when he was here. Really, you know, pushed me. Mm -hmm. He uh, he helped me a lot in like, yeah. trying to like change my photography. Mm -hmm. um, and then like yeah, guys like uh, you guys, Eric Bellamy, and like. Um, Adrian, all those guys, all those drunken conversations we've had on Friday night. So Good times. Has uh, really made me think a lot about, mm -hmm. you know, photography being, you know, more than the shallow, you know, like, things that I've been doing. Okay, so last question. Um, question actually Charlie asked a lot is, what is one question that no one's ever asked you, but maybe you wish someone asked you, and what would be the answer? What? A question that, that nobody's ever asked you about your photography. Yeah, this one stumped me. That's a hard ass question. It's a question that no one's asked me about my photography. But maybe you wish that they asked you. Maybe about um, your upbringing, your background, I don't know, being Asian American, anything like. Fucking hell, man. I don't know, I never really thought about it, but. Um... Or just any any question that I don't know what what was your answer, Bellamy? Well, why don't you ask him a question, Bellamy? You asked the last question for. Well, don't put me on the spot like that. I'll put you on the spot. Ask him a question. Ask Mike a question. Yeah, last question. Um. Yeah. Um. 
Why don't you come out more often and take pictures, dude? Hmm. Well, um, I think I can answer that. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, I mean, it's fun and all when, you know, hanging out and stuff. We all have a good time and everything, but like I said, I'm still trying to find my own voice right now. Yeah. So I find like, you know, going out by myself, mm. I get more in touch with my emotions because mm. like I'm, you know, like I'm just by myself and like I think a lot more about like what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why lately I've just kind of kept a low profile and mm. trying to find my own voice and um, concentrate on that. Like, like I want to, I mean, photography, you know, it should be about yourself more than anything. Like, mm. When you see a photograph, a photograph, you want to be like, oh, that's Mike's pictures, you know, like you can totally feel it, you know, and that's what I want. Like, I don't want to be a copycat. You know, it's a fine balance between like having influences and being a copycat, you know, so yeah. I want to like take in stride everything I learned from you guys, but also like, you know, put my own voice in it. Great, great answer and great question, Bobby. All right, thank you very much, Mike. Peace out. Peace out. Thank you, Eric. All right, let's have some puke. And Tom Tyson puke, yeah. One job.